we were talking about sincerity and uh, the issue came up about transactionalism and how obviously the goal is to do things for the sake of a law or do things for the right reason and not do things just to receive something in return, right? So if I'm giving in charity, I want to do it for, you know, seeking the pleasure of a law and how it actually might be ruining my deed if I'm doing it in order to get praise or to get some sort of recognition from other people or even just to feel like I'm a good guy. Um, so this brings up a question that Aragab al-Sahani addresses, which is, um, what about Jannah? What about paradise? Is it allowed for us to worship Allah and move through this life with the intention and the motivation being that we're trying to get paradise? Isn't that transactional? Are we saying that there's no proper intention for any of our worship except purely for the sake of Allah. Uh, so Allah Aswahani says that uh, it's permissible, it's allowed for somebody to worship Allah in a transactional way, not for the dunya, but for the afterlife, right? They want Jannah. They want the, you know, the eternal life. They want the complete bliss. They want all these sorts of things. But that's not the end goal. That's not the, the highest level, right? No doubt it's a higher level and a more mature level of spiritual spirituality to be worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purely because of who Allah is, right? Out of your sense of gratitude, out of your sense of indebtedness, out of your sense of awe, right? To not even be fixed or fixated on the fruits or the, you know, the, the food or whatever it is that you're looking for in Jannah. And he compares it to the difference between someone who's merely patient versus somebody who's pleased with Allah's decree, right? So we have these two levels. Many books talk about this, like a sabr versus a ridha. You have somebody who's able to be patient, something bad happens to them, um, whether they get sick or, you know, they <clears throat> are injured, they're out of work, they lose their job, they, you know, go through a divorce, whatever it is, and they're able to be patient. Well, that means that it's very difficult for them on the inside, but they're able to control their outside. They're not going to curse out anybody. They're not going to abuse other people with their words. They're not going to treat anybody wrong. They're not even going to express their grief in an unbecoming way that would be offensive to the Tawheed of Allah or Allah's might. Um, but that's different from Ridlaw, which is somebody who's actually not just externally controlling themselves while they're, they're burning on the inside, but somebody who's actually controlled their inside as well and has trained their inside to submit and actually be content and to be happy with what Allah has decreed, uh, even though it's not what they want and it's not what they wanted, you know, in the beginning of, of, of the, the issue. So uh, these two people aren't the same. Obviously, to be internally pleased and internally content with what Allah has decreed is a much higher level of spirituality than somebody who's merely patient with what Allah has decreed. And so Similarly, he's drawing the analogy, somebody who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of awe of Allah and out of gratitude and debt to Allah is vastly superior to somebody who's worshiping Allah, going jumping through all the hoops, five daily prayers, month of fasting every year, just because they want to get into Jannah, just because they don't want to die or they don't want to be put in the hellfire or they don't want to, um, you know, be annihilated in any sort of horrible way. Um, and, you know, uh, he finishes this section with a really interesting quote. He says, you know, we have the saying, and it's in Arabic as well, in English that the truth is bitter, right? And he says the truth is bitter only for the person who hasn't accustomed their taste buds to the truth. And he says, because if somebody has done the work and they've brought their taste buds in line with what is true, then they're actually going to find sweetness in the truth. And so this is, again, one of his sort of uh, metaphors for the difference between somebody who takes truth and finds it bitter. That's somebody who's being patient with it. That's somebody who is maybe they're, they, they want to sin, but they don't want to go to hell <laughs> or they they want to sin but they really want to go to paradise versus somebody who's attuned themselves to realize that the truth is in fact sweet right and that person is the person who's worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for who Allah is and that's the person who's able to be content on the inside with whatever Allah decrees